This is what good quality compost can do for your garden. I think pretty much every gardener can relate to this. It's about to start raining here and it's gonna rain for the next week. And I have little tiny baby plants that I was supposed to already have in the ground. So I'm out here in my pajamas <laughs> trying to get these last couple of baby plants put out so that they can enjoy the wonderful rain that we're about to have. And the garden really needs this rain. Everything is super dry. So we're looking forward to this rain soaking everything in and helping everything grow even more because man, are things growing out here. Just look how lush and beautiful these tomatoes are. They are doing fantastic. They are setting tons of blooms way earlier than I expected. Even my little baby pepper plants are setting tons of bloom. This is what good quality compost can do for your garden. It is time for me to start trimming some of the lower leaves on these tomatoes and making sure that there's not as much soil that can splash up on them because that is how blight is spread here in Georgia is the splash up from the soil mainly. It can come in in the form of the air being blown in but the primary way that we get blight here is by the soil splashing our plants. So it's very important that I trim those bottom leaves up and once they get tall enough where I have about a foot of the plant trimmed up, then I am good. I don't have to trim anymore. I don't have to cut out any suckers. I only have to trim if things get too condensed and tight inside and it just needs a little bit of air flow. So I will trim out for some of that, but only as needed, not as an automatic thing that I do. It truly amazes me that even after a foot of mulch, I still have dock coming through. Those roots are so persistent. So I was just over here working by this one and I saw that it was blooming and going to seed and I was like, uh oh, better get that out before it spreads by seed as well as root. And as you can see, their roots are extensive. I, they're bigger than my finger and they're still going deeper than this. They are very persistent and very deep roots. I'm going to have to get Ryan to help me on this one because I can't get the shovel to go in any deeper. But look what I found. I looked down and I said, that's, that's not dock. Talk about persistent. This is a potato leftover from last year's potatoes. This is where they were planted last year. This came up through a foot of mulch. Guys, I'm telling you, plant some potatoes. Check out my video. What's that? Could it be? Is it? It is. It's another nest of broody ducks. These are two Muscovies sharing a nest. And there's a bunch of eggs in there. I think it's safe to say that our goats have more than enough to eat out here. Um, I was a little worried that they were going to run out of forage, but, uh, yeah, got a little bit of everything, including a mullein, but a great diversity of forage for them out here. I don't think we'll be running out of food anytime soon. It's a slightly different story over in the buck pasture. This is just supposed to be a buck and a couple of cooney coonies in here. But that big fat heifer up there staring at me has been eating all of the food. So I might just pull her over into this field. Let her mow it down in here. What do you think of that, Lashes? You want to come over here? Let these pigs and bucks have some food? Or should I move the pigs and buck? Well, I can't move the buck in with the goats. I can move her in. I could probably move the pigs in. It's definitely something we need to consider. We can't, can't let anybody on that side because the fencing isn't good enough for pigs and goats and heifers, apparently. 
ideally I want to have all the animals set up on a rotational grazing routine but until we get the last section of fencing done there's no way we can do that so we have to make do with what we have at this time and that might mean switching people up a little bit it's not ideal it's not perfect but it's better than not having anything so we're lucky that we do have that as an option here's the view from the other side i don't know if they're gonna get wet though it's supposed to rain yeah see i don't know if you can see that little hissing face honey i'm trying to figure out how to protect you from rain okay i don't want to scare you off the nest but i don't want you getting wet either oh i have an idea well it'll help but it scared them off the nest where'd they go they like just flew away Mama, come back. I'll leave. All right, all right. I'm getting out of here. Ducks do not like it when you mess with their nesting area. So I don't want to mess with it because I want them to raise these babies. But ducks also do get up from the nest more frequently than chickens do. So we'll see if that provides enough protection from the rain. Okay. In that position, you do look like you could have some babies in your belly, after all. I hope so. I hope so, Mama Peaches. We'll see some babies in a couple of weeks, if so. Well, I got all ready for the rain, and it didn't happen. The clouds burst open into sunshine just before it got to us. So everything's gonna have to get a really good watering this morning. So I'm out here bright and early with the sunrise. Gotta take care of them babies.